Welcome back, everybody. Phil again, Bo. Um, we're continuing with these topics on the bow build process. Okay, so this bow specifically has a couple unique features that I have not had on a bow before. Actually, one primarily, but and it comes down to the stabilizer setup. Now you'll notice off the front, the lower portion of this riser, Hoyt sells this bow with this small stabilizer with it. Okay, and um, if you have any understanding on stabilizer setup. This can be a topic that people overcomplicate, but really to simplify it in a hunting bow, what we're looking for, what I'm looking for is for pin movement to get slower or pin movement to get um, tighter. A, or at least create a pattern. Uh, or sure, right. That, I mean, that, that's it's something that probably on a more complicated topic, we've talked about this a bunch, mm -hmm. more on the, on the target side of stuff, but for a bow hunting setup, we're looking for a slow pin movement and tight pin movement, right? Bo's, Bo's mentioning um, certain patterns that, that if you understand the patterns and you kind of know how to, how to uh, adjust. But before we get into that, you know, I've shot this bow a handful of times now and I actually shot it with, this is, this is a, a similar bar that I've shot in the past on, uh, that mounts right off to the front of the riser. So. I'm going to show you what it looks like here mounted on. So this, this st stabilizer setup is a 12 inch front bar and kind of my go to has been actually that offset bracket with this front stabilizer bar and it's sweeping my, my offset bar off to the side. That's okay, I'll hold it right now. So this new bow and, and, and some bows in the past have had this feature where they mount off the back or the side, but Hoyt um, on this bow has some some holes right through the riser on the lower edge that offset that uh, that bracket or that, that set it a little lower away from the grip now a couple things to to understand basics again this this is I don't want to overcomplicate this this process but when you look at this setup I mean leverage it's all about leverage from the pivot point which is your hand so the further away you move weight, the less weight you need. The further away you move an offset bar, the less weight you need or, or length you need. And that's where when you see a, a target stabilizer, you usually you see a big old long stabilizer. Sometimes it depends on the weight, it depends on the shooter, but in a bow hunting setup, we want what's more practical for hunting. So this setup usually gets shortened, but what Hoyt's done is they've kind of taken off, moved the stabilizer, uh, an additional stabilizer position further away from your hand, and moved it further away by also moving it off to the front. So believe it or not, I've played with this setup with this bar on its own and the offset bracket, and then the little stubby that, that's off the front, the hold pattern for me, in my opinion, and I've also played with this one off the front, which is, would be similar to what that one was in lengthwise. It feels like it holds pretty similar. Now, I, I know, Bo, you've, you haven't played with them a ton yet because your bow hasn't come in yet that you're going to build for yourself. But yep. as I've been playing with this, I've really been interested, I've been enjoying this less weight, less overall mass weight on the bow. Now, with that being said, there are some new tools on the market that we're going to be, and they last year, I believe, is when they came out. That's when they really started kind of getting popular in the archery scene anyway. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Dylan come in here in a second. He's got one mounted on his bow. And I'm gonna start integrating this so that way, in addition to what I've done in the past where I'll set a stabilizer setup, shoot a few arrows, kind of see, look for patterns like Bo said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tendencies is my pin dropping out the bottom, is the float bigger than I want, adding weight, you know, moving the leverage around until I narrow it down. There's a tool that we're gonna use and we're gonna show you here in a second that I'm gonna be messing with on my bow here. So, you know, I just have not set it up yet. We actually just got, got ours in it's going to be able to track pin movement and so you can understand patterns. So let's go ahead and um, let's cut away. I'm going to bring Dylan in. Dylan's going to shoot a few arrows and then we're going to show you what the pin movement does on the app with his so we can really break this process down further. All right, so we got Dylan with us. Uh, going to demonstrate the, the Mantis and um, go ahead and Dylan, when you're ready, just take a shot. He's, he's kind of neutral position. Uh, this is his hunting, sometimes 3D bow, as he likes to play around with a few different ones. But uh, So Dylan has this mounted on the side of his bow here, okay? And what it's doing, it's calibrated, so it's tracking pin movement. It's kind of showing what we're doing. So, Bo, go ahead and uh, let's, let's see if it pops up here. Um, 
to show. Let's go ahead and take one more shot, Dylan. So we're going to shoot another arrow, Dylan. We're going, to, we're going to shoot a couple. We're going to be able to track what Dylan's pin movement is is looking like as he shoots. So um, this is something we've done in the past with the laser, and it's kind of a generic version. This is just a, a really high tech. Uh, version of of what the process will look like so as Dylan's shooting and he's he understands what his his pin movement his pin uh, his tight picture looks like good shot there Dylan mm -hmm. so let's go ahead and kind of get a tight end on the phone there so go ahead and start that shot process over Bo okay so what I'm going to do here on this app for the mantis is I'm going to go ahead and just play the full shot scenario okay so as you see here it's running a line okay coming down it's changing colors those colors are different portions of your shot process okay and then boom it'll turn red here which would be the release okay but what this app is going to allow us to do okay and what this little mantis x8 it's going to allow us to do is help develop the patterns like phil mentioned earlier um, and look at specific segments so as you see here it's got setup hold release okay and that'll obviously correlate in the colors on the screen here so if we're just going to solely look at the hold okay the hold process i can slowly scan through it and see which direction he comes down onto the target from and see if there's any tendencies for a pin to dip now as we can look here all i'm seeing is a little bit more of a left and right pattern okay which can dictate moving some weights around or possibly moving the stabilizer in or out um, specifically referring to the rear bar um, but it allows me to track every shot that Dylan does. So Dylan, let's go ahead and take another shot real quick and we'll compare the two. So, all right. We're going to go ahead and pull those arrows, but we're going to talk over the, the consistencies on what we're seeing. Yep. So, number one here number two so number two this shot number two and already pulled it up on my phone okay um the moment dylan releases it's going to go ahead and spit it over here onto my app so we'll go ahead and play this one in full speed again coming down onto the target we see that left and right tendency on his hold there coming into it sitting right on the dot and then the shot breaks okay so again very similar to the first one what I like to look at and what Dylan and I were actually talking about earlier is the direction that he comes onto the target. So in both shots, he's actually coming into the target from the left side. Um, as long as it's consistent, it's not a problem. Okay. Um, but the reason why it's an important topic to talk about is foot placement. Okay. Um, and then the, the, what we like to, you know, talking about earlier with the trunk, your trunk, okay, internal, external rotation. Where is he starting initially? Okay, you're going to have a tendency to come into the target on one side or another, depending upon the rotation of your core. I can let so, Phil kind of so talk Dylan, about that a little just, bit. So just to preface this, Dylan, this is the first Dylan video Dylan's been on with us for a little while. Uh, Dylan's been a longtime shooter here at No Limits and a, a pro-level shooter. So... I like to use him as an example because you see that little pin float when it's about ready to break off, it's inside the X in the most part, right? So it's understand that everybody has pin movement. Dylan's got a bunch of perfect score targets on the wall, but this is his hunting boat. So to, to, to mesh that world between target and hunting and see where we find in the middle to, to achieve maximum accuracy, that's what we're looking for. But Dylan, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of a wrench here. So grab your bow for me and just to tie in some of the things that we do with the practice routines and some of the other things, I want you to go ahead and take your starting posture and then I want you to rotate as if you were aiming here and give me some external rotation at the target. So this is just simulating another one of those possible shot scenarios that we could see in the field. So you, Dylan's feet are now close to the target where he usually has an open stance. And when he was first looking at the boat, he, he's about 15 feet off where he would be as if he was shooting a normal shot. So he's got some external rotation here, and we're gonna see how that changes on his pin movement. Still a good shot bottom of the, of the spot there. Didn't change very much. Did a little bit. So, like I said, we were talking about a little bit of stability, okay, and pin movement, and that pattern, okay? I'm gonna start back with shot number one, so you can see this real quick. In the top right of the screen, okay, this Mantis X8 in the app, okay, it tracks your stability, okay, and they give you a score based off of 100, okay? His stability score with a neutral position is 96.9, 
okay? We did a slight bit of rotation there. Dropped his score very minimal. But again, remember, Dylan's definitely a top-level shooter to a 94.2. If we amplify that further and have even more internal or external put rotation, knees, put him on his butt. exactly, All that comes into play. This stability score is going to drop significantly. Okay, but again, Dylan's a top-level shooter. It's going to take a lot of variance to change his hold. So, and, and all that being said, this is it's a cool tool that we're going to start integrating as we're breaking down our setups and building our setups. So that way we can ensure that we're, we're picking out those tendencies and we're adjusting our stabilizers to give us a, a maximum, you know, our, our best possible sight picture when we release. Now, this also is going to showcase you know, I'll ask some people sometimes, what's your least favorite shooting position? Oh, uh, whatever, I'm uh, sitting on my butt or my knees, but this will really tell us the truth, right? Somebody may say that a certain position is better than the other for them, but what this can do is just track that for us. In addition to that, the big thing that I like on this is the follow through. When you get into one of those positions for like a hard internal rotation, again, maybe you droop on an animal and you're tracking, you're tracking, you're tracking, and you end up taking the shot here, you're going to be able to see what that follow through looks like, you know, if you're if you're not following through properly driving that front hand to the target and executing well, your accuracy is going to suffer. So this is where tools like this are more so than just target tools, right? I mean, you've been playing with this for since last year and I tell you it's 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 fun to see this on on a hunting bow because this is what Dylan hunted with last year. And you can also see some of the, the setup features. I mean, he still is running long bars, right? Stability is key. Accuracy is always key when it comes to hunting. This bow's a heavy bow though, right? Right now it's not terribly heavy. It's not as heavy as I normally would run. In comparison to In what comparison, you know, normally, yeah. yeah. My normal hunting bow would be probably a little bit heavier than this. We were kind of in between when we went out to Wisconsin for our last hunt, so had to make a couple quick changes. But it just, to, to show you that, you know, the... The setups of the past, you know, where it's just smack a six inch stabilizer on the front and run with it, there's definitely signs to the madness of how some of these bows get built out and how they get set up. So part of the process, like I said, a little, little longer video here, but super uh, awesome tool that we're going to be showcasing and also get to introduce Dylan because it's always fun to pick on Dylan because he always <laughs> usually puts it in the middle. So we're going to try to get him to, to maybe um, show us his human side a little bit more. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. A ton of more information coming with the bow build process and the tools we're utilizing to, to kind of get it ready for season. So see you all soon.